Today I'm going to be taking a look at werewolf problems, and specifically how to solve them with game theory. The problem is pretty simple. There's werewolves, and they're terrorizing the ancient city of Bays. And the people there want to identify and execute them. And werewolf trials were traditionally overseen by a single judge using a ritual involving badger milk. Now, badger milk, as everyone knows, is a 90% effective werewolf detection. That means 10% of the time when you use it on a werewolf, it'll tell you if the person's actually human. 10% of the time when you use it on a human, it'll tell you they're actually a werewolf. And the rest of the time, it'll give you accurate results. The people based, you know, they want to keep their judges honest. They want to give them incentives to do the right thing. So if a judge made a mistake, if they executed a human or released a werewolf, they ended up paying a fee fine of 200 for their gold for their mistake. And they were also rewarded 1,000 gold for correctly executing werewolves. And, you know, the problem the people Bays had was that since the badger milk ritual is only 90% accurate, they were still executing humans 10% of the time, and that really bothered them. So they came up with a improved system. They said, now trials will be conducted by a three-judge tribunal, not just a judge acting by himself. And each judge is going to conduct their badger milk ritual completely in secret, they won't be able to influence each other, or corrupt each other, or anything like that. And then they have to, you know, secretly vote to execute or release the accused. And we're going to say executions now require a unanimous vote, vote of guilty from all three judges. So the question is, is this a good solution to their problem? Um, you know, it makes sense. It's intuitive. But when you have voting systems with strategic, uh, you know, intelligent actors with incentives, to all act simultaneously and do things, game theory says really complicated stuff can happen, and that's what we're going to take a look at today. So just to summarize the payoff table for you guys, you can see this is a very reasonable payoff table. Um, if a judge knew that someone was, in a, was you know, a human, so we're up here, the best thing to do would be declare him innocent. They don't want him to be guilty. If we knew he's a werewolf, so we're in the second row, the best thing to do is execute him. You know, the judge's incentives are perfectly aligned with what society wants. So what we're going to look at here is first, what is the symmetric Nash equilibrium voting strategy? So how would judges optimally vote if they were playing this game and they're all going to play the same strategy? How often are innocents executed with this new unanimity rule with three judges? And then how often would innocents be executed if instead of unanimity we use majority rule? So the first step to understanding this is to talk about honest voting and pure strategies. Honest voting would be when a judge votes exactly as he would if he were the sole decider. So with you know with these payoffs we looked at, if you were a judge acting by yourself, if you think there's a 90% chance he's werewolf, you vote to execute. If you think there's a 90% chance he's innocent, you vote to let him go. That that would be honest voting. It would just be doing your badger milk ritual, looking at the result, voting based on that. And the question we want to start with is, if each judge voted honestly based on their signal, could that be an equilibrium? Now the key idea we need to internalized to work this out is that votes only matter when they change outcomes or payoffs. So even though the judges can't talk to each other, they can still say, hmm, when does my vote matter? My vote is only pivotal, it only changes the outcome when all the other judges voted to execute. That's how unanimity rule, unanimity rule works. If two judges vote, you know, innocent, he'll be let, the accused will be let go and you could change any single judge's vote and the outcome wouldn't change. The only time changing a single judge's vote matters is when two people vote to execute, one person votes not to. So let's assume everyone else is voting honestly, and our badger milk ritual says human. Do we have an incentive to vote dishonestly as a judge? Our vote only matters when the other two judges vote to execute, and they're voting honestly. So that means that both of those other judges' signals said you know, batter milk rituals, were that the accused is a werewolf. So given that, what are the odds the accused is a werewolf when our ritual says he's not? To figure this out, we're going to turn to Bayes' theorem. And Bayes' theorem is a really powerful theorem in probability. It's super awesome. Go to Wikipedia, read about it. I'm not going to get into it in depth here. The high-level idea is it is a way to do two things. First, it lets you take an existing belief about how likely something is, and update that belief to reflect new information in a sensible way. Second, it lets you reverse conditional probability. So the, this uh, pipe notation here, P of A, this pipe means given B. So this is how likely is A to occur given that I know B. 
And on the left-hand side, we have P of A given B. On the right-hand side, we have all of these P of B given A's. So we're kind of flipping the condition. So this would be, what's the probability he's a werewolf, given that we got these votes from our judges? That's what we want to know. And what we are given in the problem statement is, what's the probability that we'd get badger milk ritual results, given that he's a werewolf? So I'm not going to go more in depth than that, but definitely check it out. Um, if we know the result of a ritual is human, our existing belief, this is what we're going to update, is that there's a 90% chance he's human. When our vote is pivotal, we know the other two judges' rituals were werewolf. And we should never care about what, what we vote, except when we're pivotal, because it's not going to affect outcomes. Your vote only matters when it affects outcomes. So you might as well always assume you're pivotal when you're voting. Bayes' theorem lets us update our beliefs based on this, and we're just going to figure out what's the probability the accused is a werewolf when we're pivotal and we're considering voting innocent based on our, our ritual results. So what's the probability of werewolf given the other two judges voted werewolf is what this is saying. So capital W's, you know, the person actually is a werewolf to little w is the odds that the other two judges voted werewolf. And we can just plug and chug this. This is, you know, our ritual said human. So we know our current beliefs about the probability of him being werewolf is 0.1 and human 0.9. That's this term, this term, and this term. And what's the probability that two judges will vote werewolf, given that he actually is a werewolf? That's just the odds that both of them had accurate uh, badger milk ritual results, which is 0.9 times 0.9. Then what's the probability that the other two judges will vote to execute him, given he's human? That's the, just the probability that both of their badger milk rituals were wrong. 0.1 times 0.1 equals 0 0.1. And you know, these are the four terms we just need to plug into here, and it's just, you know, calculation. Wolfram Alpha will tell you that it is 0 0.9. So when we're pivotal, if everyone's voting honestly, there's a 90% chance that the accused is actually a werewolf, even though our badger milk ritual told us he was human. And given a 90% chance uh, with these payoffs here, if there's a 90% chance he's a werewolf, we're exactly in the situation where there's just one judge who got a werewolf uh, badger milk result, we're going to vote to execute. So it can't possibly be an equilibrium for everyone to vote honestly, because if two judges vote honestly and get werewolf rituals, the third judge has an incentive to vote to execute no matter what his signal is. So we're going to start thinking about how can we actually figure out what a incentive, what a uh, you know game theory equilibrium solution to this voting is. How sure do we need to be, a be to be that the accused is a werewolf for us to want to execute? The EV of convicting someone given a level of certainty, W, uh, of how likely they are to be a werewolf is just this. It's we get 1,000 when we're right with probability script W, and we lose 200 when we're wrong, 1 minus script W. And the EV of releasing someone giving a certainty level is you know 0 when we're wrong and minus 200 when we're right. And we can just set those equal to see when we're indifferent. And that comes when we think there's a one in seven chance he's a werewolf. At that point, we're indifferent as a judge between wanting him convicted and wanting him released. And this is indifference condition. It's These are crucial to solving for equilibria. If you aren't familiar with them, go back and check out our rock, paper, scissors video, which we cover them in depth. Um, I'm going to assume you know, guys know what those are here, and we're just going to move on. Um, and that basically is most of the work for finding equilibrium. We know honest voting is not an equilibrium. We know always voting to execute is not an equilibrium either. It's pretty obvious, but you guys can check it if you want. So we're going to guess that an equilibrium is of the form, when a judge's ritual says werewolf, he always votes to execute. That seems intuitive. But when a judge's ritual says human, he votes to execute with some probability. He doesn't always go by his own vote, by his own ritual results. And then our question is just what value of x makes Bayes rule tell us there's exactly a 1 in 7 chance the accused is guilty? If we're using that value of x, then when you condition on being pivotal, you won't have any incentive to deviate from the strategy because you'll be indifferent between voting to release and voting to convict. So back to Bayes rule, we're plugging in 1 7th on the left hand side. This right hand side is the same when we write it out in this form, but it's going to change a little bit in terms of what the actual chances the other two judges vote werewolf, given he's a werewolf, are, because we've changed the voting strategy. So now it's the odds that they both get a werewolf result from their badger milk ritual. 
plus the chances that one of them gets a werewolf result, that's this 0.9, the other gets a human result, but decides to lie. That happens with probability x. Plus the chances that they both get a human result, and they both lie. That's this 0.1x squared. And exact same idea for the probability they both vote werewolf when the person's actually a human. Um, just flip the 0.1s and the 0.9s. So again, you just plug in numbers. Wolfram Alpha tells us this is going to be 77.6% uh, is how often a judge would vote to execute when his own badger milk ritual result says the person's a human. So that's our equilibrium. Let's think a little about what it actually means. The odds of convicting a werewolf under the system where all the judges follow that strategy are 93.4%. We've slightly improved the rate with which we convict the guilty over the single judge situation, so that's good. But what's pretty shocking and terrible is that our odds of convicting a human actually went up to 50.9%. You know, they used to be 10% when it was just one judge acting by himself. And that's really terrible. That's actually kind of shocking because we took this system that's designed to require unanimity, make everyone, you know, be tr super sure that all three judges think the accused is guilty. And what actually happens when you have strategic players voting you know, intelligently according to game theory is that the odds of convicting the innocent go way up with a un unanimous rule. And you know, as we talked about, what about their previous system where there's just one judge? We keep all the paths the same. One judge would always vote according to his badger milk ritual results. So these numbers would be 90% and 10%. And that's, you know, doesn't just seem much better. It's actually that result is better for the judge's payoffs. That's a increase for any individual given judge to follow that strategy. So that suggests that there's actually an asymmetric equilibrium to this game, where two judges just always vote to execute blindly. They're just kind of patsies, and one judge is the arbiter. He votes based on his badger mech ritual. That's an equilibrium that's equivalent to just having one judge and the other two don't do anything. And that will be an asymmetric equilibrium of this game that's actually better than the symmetric one for society and for the judges. A question I want you guys to think about, and you now have the mathematical tools to figure out, is what if there were five judges instead of three and the payoff stayed the same? Do things get worse or better? It's kind of an interesting question. You can work it out. I'm not going to go through it here. What I am going to talk about is what if instead of unanimous rule, we required majority rule? Majority rule has this really great property that when your vote is pivotal is exactly when everyone else was evenly split. You know, in majority rule, you're only pivotal when the other two judges, one voted to release, one voted to convict. And that has a nice property that means the other judges' ritual results uh, balanced out if they're voting honestly and give us no information. And, you know, we if we have no information from the other judges' results, that means our ritual result is all we know. And you can check with Bayes' rule. You can try updating your information with Bayes' rule, confirm that that's the case, but it is. And so given that, honest voting will be in equilibrium because when you're pivotal, you have no information except your own, so you might as well vote honestly based on it. And under majority rule, the odds of convicting are 97.2%, so we convict the guilty a lot more often. We also almost never convict a human incorrectly. And, you know, furthermore, as the number of judges gets large, majority rule gets perfectly accurate. So I'm going to end this video here. Definitely check out our blog. Uh, this video was a result of one of our brain teasers, which you can read the problem statement of on the blog. I'll also provide a little more information on this problem. You can follow us on Twitter. We always tweet when we release new brain teasers, new videos, new game theory materials. And, of course, subscribe to us on YouTube so you get notified when we release new video solutions. Thanks for watching, guys.